opportunity on a bird watching vlog. Right now I'm in the Bavarian Forest National Park. I'm here for an internship doing a project on uh, monitoring European wildcat with camera traps and lure sticks. And right now I'm just uh, going on a hike because I got a day off. Let's see what birds I can find. I've got a couple of targets like Cape Cayley and Hazel Grouse, Pygmy Owl, Ural Owl, and Boreal Owl. But yeah, we'll see what we can find. Or you saw a nice woodpecker. It's already drumming for its territory. So let's go. The great spotted woodpecker is the most common woodpecker in Europe. This woodpecker was pecking this tree to tell other woodpeckers that this is his territory. This branch was perfect for it because the sound reached very far. You can tell that this is a male woodpecker because of the red patch in its neck. Females don't have that. Juveniles can be recognized by a red cap, so the red patch is a bit more up. Insects are the woodpecker's main prey. With the drumming it makes holes in the bark where they stick their long tongue in to catch insects. They can also feed themselves on nuts, seeds and sometimes in spring other birds their eggs. So behind me there's a whole tree that's infested with Eurasian siskins. They're feeding themselves on the pine cones over there. I really like them. They're pretty little birds. Especially the males. Very yellow with uh, a black cap. So yeah, it's cool. The Eurasian bullfinch is a small, bulky bird and looks absolutely amazing. They are shy birds and will mostly be a bit quiet. Their calls are very low and their skin can be described as mournful. They feed themselves on seeds and buds of fruit trees. They are mostly seen in pairs or small family groups flying from bush to bush. The cold tit looks a lot like its more common family member, the great tit. The cold tit is a bit more dull of color and has a white patch in its neck. 
Because of its more slender build, it can forage more successfully in the coniferous forests. So while I was hiking, I stumbled upon uh, some colleagues of mine and they were out here for uh, Caper Cayley monitoring. So they asked me to join, of course, Caper Cayley, one of my target species. Uh, but I'm walking back now because they were planning on going out the whole day and I did not bring any lunch. So it kind of sounds like a good idea, even in the Czech border right now. So yeah, we uh, did here Cape Cayley and found some scat and uh, footprints. Haven't seen them, but as I'm walking back, you never know. So yeah, I really hope I see a Cape Cayley during my internship. They're very cool. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful out here. So yeah, keep you updated. Let's go! So right now I'm just gonna wait a little bit at the spot where we heard the Cape Cayley and where there are a lot of tracks. I'm gonna sit on my tiny chair and it's pretty comfortable, I can tell you. So yeah, let's wait, let's hope. I just heard another Cape Cayley, but this one was really far away. Go look for it. So when they are calling, they are most likely sitting in a small tree. Because there's a lot of small pine trees here. But the thing is, there's a lot of hills. Because of course you're in a mountain. So it's pretty hard to see very far and see all the trees that might be sitting. So I'm just gonna wait here for a little longer and. I have to go the direction that I heard it, so might be lucky, might not be lucky. <laughs> yeah, Capcaillie is a tree species for every birder I think that hasn't seen it yet. So yeah, let's hope. So no Capercaillie, but what? Guess what? I just saw flying out of the woods from the ground. Just split second, and I went to go look for it. Found some scat, so that confirms what I thought that it was a hazel grouse. So, a different grouse species, which I haven't seen yet, too. So, that's a really nice lifer. I really, really like that. So it's a good morning. Tonight, I'm going to a spot where I've heard a Eurasian pygmy owl. I'm hoping. To film it, of course, but you never know. So, uh, I'll take you guys with me looking for the pick me out, too. I am looking forward to that. I hope I will be able to film it. Last time I was there, I heard it, but I didn't, I forgot my binoculars while, do, while doing my internship, so I couldn't really go look for it. And it sounded pretty close, so. Let's hope. But yeah, here's a grouse, grouse otherwise very good store for score for today. But yeah, we'll see. So the last time you saw me it was fr Friday afternoon. Uh, let me it's Sunday morning now, so let me catch you guys up for a few things. I went uh, to the site where I heard uh, the pick me owl Friday night, but it didn't show up this time. Then Saturday morning I went on uh, another hike and got some nice mammal footage so uh yeah i'm gonna just gonna make wildlife vlogs 
from now on and not just bird watching or mammal watching. Just kind of combine it all. So yeah, here are the here's the mammal footage of what I shot. This roe deer buck has a nice fluffy skin over its antlers. This fluffy skin is called velvet. In November, December, roe deer lose their antlers. In January, they start growing their antlers back and they will be covered in this velvet. When their antlers are fully grown back, they rub this velvet skin off. The coat color of the roe deer can vary throughout the year. In winter, they have this dull color. But in the summer, it turns to a beautiful reddish coat. When the antlers are fully grown, they will each have three points. Roe deer live approximately for 10 years. The story about Bambi was originally about the life of a roe deer. The rutting season of the roe deer is in July and August. Roe deer are mostly solitary, but may form small groups in winter. They can be active throughout the whole day, but will use open spaces more when it's dark. The peak times of their activity is during dawn and dusk. They spend a lot of time lying down to ruminate. They mostly feed on buds and leaves from trees and shrubs, but may also feed ferns, grass and hares. Despite their old world distribution, they are more related to the new world deer than to old world deer. They occur in almost all over Europe and up to Central Asia. They can make barking sounds as an alarm call. So yeah, that was pretty nice, the road there. I was on top of it and I was down a hill by a creek so it didn't hear me and I could just pretty nice to film it. The couple, the fox couple, it's pretty nice too, but foxes scare me all the time because every time I see a fox, I'm like, lynx, but then I look better and it's just a fox. And the other, that was pretty amazing. Like, I've always dreamt of seeing another in the middle of the woods. So, uh, got that. And I'm just hiking. Got out a little later because it was still snowing this morning. Still a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna see what we'll find. Maybe nothing. Who knows? Let's go. So, it was a very quiet hike. Besides uh, some woodpeckers. Not even a little, even a little bit exciting showed up. But yeah, been out again. Had my fresh input of nature. And I hope you enjoyed. So, I hope we'll see you next time. I'm uh, still quite a walk back to the car. So, gonna enjoy a little bit more. Take care. Bye.